the telecast with me is Fleur Hassan. She is the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem. She joins me from Jerusalem right now. Uh, thank you, Fleur, for joining us. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first question, there are, uh, you know, thousands of these videos, these images, these visuals of barbarity by the Hamas terrorists on Israelis. Uh, uh, you know, the world is shook, the world is shocked. Uh, uh, the big question, how, how is the government of Israel that's at this point in time committed to safeguarding the lives of Israeli citizens? Well, first of all, you know, you reiterated that this has been really one of the worst massacres that the Jewish people have experienced in modern history after the Holocaust. And we're still trying to find um, how to how to deal with everything that that we've seen and experienced over the last few days. Now, I can tell you what Israel is not going to do. We're not out for revenge. We're out for the dismantling of the terrorist infrastructure and the education that allows this to happen. We have a border with Hamas. We left the Gaza Strip in 2005, and there is absolutely no reason for Hamas to be attacking Israel or throwing rockets, except for one thing, that they don't want a two-state solution. They want the complete annihilation of the state of Israel. And so what Israel is going to do and I'm not sure how, because I'm not a military person, but I have trust in the military of this country that they will go about now dismantling the terrorist toxic infrastructure that encouraged this, allowed this, and sponsored this to happen. And now Israel has declared war on Hamas, but the Palestinians are ruining that they are going to be collateral damage in this war. Uh, how does the Israel government going to safeguard their lives? Also a narrative that is peddling across the globe at why should Palestinians pay for the terrorism and infliction of atrocities that has been done by Hamas terrorists? Well, first of all, unfortunately, war is ugly and there's always collateral damage. The difference is that we don't, we are targeting uh, terrorist infrastructure and terrorists. Um, we warn people when we're going to be exploding a building that we found is hiding weapons. We warn the people to leave the building and they do. We have, uh, we have an army with a very, a very high code of conduct, humanitarian code of conduct, and we will keep to that. But unfortunately, there will be some collateral damage. We hope it's the minimum possible. Uh, in every war, and especially a war like this, which is existential, it's civilizational. There are always going to be uh, innocent civilians killed. Israel does its best to avoid it, whereas Hamas go and specifically target civilians. Uh, you know, Israel has been reiterating, telling the world to take, to take action against the Hamas terrorist organization. Um, you know, Israeli citizens live in constant fear of suicide attacks, bomb blasts. Uh, do you think and expect that the world, uh, US and the other world powers are going to come to Israel's aid in snuffing out Hamas after this brutal incident that has taken place? Well, what we need the world is to support us psychologically and morally and, uh, and give us backing to um, uproot uh, and clean out that very toxic terrorist infrastructure, which in fact, uh, you know, Hamas in Gaza is the long arm of the Iranians. And so uh, what, you know, what we will do by by uprooting um, the, the terrorist infrastructure is also in the end going to be helping the entire world because Iran's ambitions are way beyond this region. So, uh, the modus operandi that has been used by terrorists who infiltrate into Kashmir uh, in our territory in India, it's the same. They use their men as human shields. They execute target killings. And uh, this is not just Israel's fight against Hamas or India's fight against lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed and ISIS. It is the world's fight against global jihad. How do you think that countries can come together to win this, win this war against Islamist terrorism? Well, first of all, we have to recognize that it exists. Uh, most people are in denial 
Um, and so, first of all, we have to we have to recognize that this type of toxic fundamentalism that has taken over Iran, that is in many other parts of the world, including your country, we have to ensure that people understand what we're up against. You know, in the Second World War, everybody knew that Hitler was the bad guy and what his ambitions were. I think the first thing to do is to educate people and make them understand that these people are here for one thing, and that is to take the world back 500 years. Thank you, Flora Hassan, for joining me on the telecast and giving me uh, this analysis and what's happening on the ground. And here's hoping that the war comes to end very, very soon. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.